I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by West Coast Eagles AFLW player. It's Tipperary's finest, Ashton McCarthy. How's it going, Ash? Hi, Ashton. How are things? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. So this is your life now. You're in a hotel room at the minute. You're getting settled in ahead of your game this weekend. Yeah, so we take on Hawthorne tomorrow night, Friday in Melbourne. So today's Thursday, just flew over um, from the West Coast from Perth. So three and a half hour flight and um, uh, about a half an hour bus ride from the airport to the hotel. So a lot of traveling, but um, no, it's good to get around Australia and um, yeah, meet other opposition across the country. And it must be tough to go straight from the, the airport off the plane. Like, I know what I'm like, get off the plane, like your muscles, you, you feel it. So I suppose, what do you do to, I suppose, make sure that you're loosened out and it, it doesn't affect you on the pitch then? Yeah, it's actually funny. Today actually was one of the shortest plane rides we've had. So we took on the Gold Coast um, a couple of weeks ago. So we had to fly to Brisbane and that was like a five hour flight and then an hour bus ride out to um, Gold Coast. So it definitely takes a toll on its body. And there's obviously time difference there as well of a couple of hours. Um, so I've lost a couple of hours today too. But I'm just trying to like stick to a normal routine. Um, we have great support staff here. So we have our S&C and physios. So we went like on a walk when we got here, did a little bit of skills and that. And then um, the physios are there available for massage. And then we have a swimming pool here at the um, hotel as well. So we're just encouraged to like utilize all the resources that we have and then just stick into a routine that we normally would. So like just a normal bedtime, um, trying to wind down. So at the minute, I'm just going to try to wind down tonight, maybe watch a movie, read my book, um, and then it's game day tomorrow. So just like getting up and about for that then. Amazing. No, it sounds great. And so far this year, you've been really on form. I was just looking at the, the AFLW, the, the Irish website. And of course, every round they do a player of the round. And you have been three times out of five rounds now. You have been the, the Irish player of the round. So it's amazing to see you've just been so consistent. So I'm guessing you're feeling good this year. Things are clicking into place. Um, yeah, I think obviously the last couple of years I've picked up a couple of injuries and um, I took the onus on myself to stay here in the off season to rehab my wrist. And I think I came to a stage where I needed to get the best out of myself um, to continue my AFL career. So um, unfortunately, I had to, I suppose, ring the tip manager and say I wasn't going to be home. But um, that's a sacrifice I had to, to make to try to reach my potential in this sport. So I do think being here for the off season and just playing a little bit of like club football over here, AFL, um, helped. And then um, just being around footy a bit more, um, increased my knowledge and just pushing myself in the off season. Off season has like led me to a better preseason. And then obviously staying injury free helps. But yeah, I'm just doing my role for the team and um, I play in the midfield, so it means I'm around the ball a lot. Um, so I can pick up the ball a bit more and get tackles in and things like that. Um, but yeah, I'm just happy that I'm able to um, be consistent for West Coast and um, hopefully we get a few more um, results on the board over the next few weeks. And how was it to stay over there? Um, I suppose when everybody else was going home, you decided to make that tough decision. I'm sure it wasn't easy to to make, but um, you're, you're seeing the fruits of it now. So how was it to, to be there, I suppose, on your own, um, concentrating on trying to, to improve? Yeah, at the start when I actually made the decision, um, it was obviously hard, but I kind of my mind made up and I didn't really have too much options because I had some um, appointments with surgeons and stuff that I had to, to make um, and stay in Australia. So I think when I came to the decision, um, I was kind of in a happy enough place about it. But throughout the summer at home, I guess, just even on social media, seeing all the other girls at home reunited with their friends and family, um, even some of the girls getting to represent their counties as well. Um, and then when Tipperary won that relegation game as well, um, that kind of hit home. So it's different little moments that you kind of wish that you were at home. But I think when I look back now, it was probably the best decision. And I suppose just having those injuries, it made me think, you know, if I do want to make a career out of this or want to get the best on myself and not regret um, not giving it 100 percent, I needed to stay in the off season. And um, I'm happy now that I made that decision and. Um, you know, I obviously have so much more to learn in this sport and continue to grow, but I think I'm on the right path to definitely getting the best out of myself. So um, looking back now, I'm happy. But at the time, there was moments where you definitely get a little bit homesick. Oh, of course. Absolutely. And when you talk about trying to improve in the game, 
is there an aspect of the game that's difficult to to learn or what probably would be the the hardest part of it for you yeah so at the start it was obviously all the rules and all that but they kind of come second nature and then it's just like there's a lot of structure and game plans that's a little bit different to Gaelic football I think with Gaelic you obviously have your role and there is a certain plan that the team um, would like to stick to but you can kind of play a lot more on like in- instinct and stuff like that whereas there's a lot of structures that you have to continually try to um, abide by um, and like if you don't do it like you're not playing your role for the team so always trying to think of those is quite difficult um, and it can kind of pull away from you playing on your instincts so I'm trying to balance both like obviously playing my role but taking the game on and um, bringing my own flair to it so trying to kind of do that and then also just the perceived pressure so obviously tackling is a big thing and physicality but you have so much less time on the ball but then sometimes you actually have more time than you think um so it's about that composure piece I'm trying to work on as well like often I look back at clips and I might do a quick kick when I actually had a couple more seconds to um kind of compose myself before I did it so it's just trying to balance that perceived pressure and then the structures and that. But I think I'm getting better at it. And obviously the more AFL that I play, um, the more natural it will come. And this is the first year where I haven't gone home and played Gaelic. So I think it's coming a bit more natural, but I can definitely have to continue to grow and learn as well still. And it's 15 steps you're allowed to take. I'm right in saying that. Uh, yeah, about that. In my position now, um, it's quite contested. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I get into much space to do that. But um, once you get on the outside, yeah, it's like 15 or a step or 15 meters or something. And then you can you have to take a bounce. So um, I haven't taken a bounce yet in the game. So um, but yeah, there's the quicker girls on the outside um, that get in space and um, they can do that. Oh, Ash, well, you're pretty quick now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that must be hard. There's a lot quicker. (laughs) It must be hard, I'd say, the transition from Gaelic football because you you know you're only allowed to get your four steps and go. So to go into a game like that, it uh, like you said, it's probably better to have that more time. As you said, you stayed in pre-season, you stayed in the off season, so you really got to grips with the with the whole thing. Yeah, I think um, one thing, obviously, we've played Gaelic football since we're like five or six, so it's ingrained in us. After four steps, you have to play the ball. Um, so I still find myself I might take four or five steps and your brain nearly kicks in being like that feels wrong Um, so you nearly play the ball when you don't actually need to Um, so yeah it's still like learning that you don't actually need to bounce after four steps but um, yeah no I think that it's definitely coming a bit more natural to me and I obviously have a lot more time with my coaches as well in the off season and um, yeah I just immerse myself in the footy world um, watch a lot of like men's games as well in the off season and then just did all my preseason training with the girls too and was just constantly trying to um, soak everything in and I think I've definitely learned and it is my my fifth season as well so yeah. um, but there's always little things that you you continue to pick up as you go. And what is life like as an AFLW player so what is your training schedule like each week? Um, we're actually one of the really lucky um, teams this year that we actually transitioned into doing a one full day session um so we have the luxury I guess with our list that they're quite young so a lot of the girls are just out of school um or else there's girls like in my situation that either are working part-time or um don't work and football is their number one so um during the off season we train maybe five days a week and on a Wednesday we were in the club like literally all day so we do a gym session a field session um and our um education with our psychologist which I found really good this year as well Um, and then you could do meetings with your coaches and like ice baths and stuff like that so I found this year the transition into more full-time really helped Um, and we have a similar kind of session on a Saturday as well and then that gets taken back then when the season's on so at the minute it's a Monday evening we have review and training Um, Wednesday we still have that day session and then depending on when we travel we might have a Thursday session but obviously today we traveled we'll play tomorrow and we'll fly back Saturday so yeah, it just depends on games. They've come thick and fast at the minute. Um, but yeah, life at the minute is probably just completely football. Um, and then just spend some time outside with like friends that don't play football as well, which is nice to get that balance. Oh, absolutely. And it sounds like you you don't have much time for, for anything else. Do do some of the girls 
work alongside playing also? Yeah, so um, RLSC is quite young, so there's actually some girls still doing their leaving search. Okay. Um, like one of our number one draft pick was 17, Ella Roberts. So um, a, an exceptional player, but it's, yeah, it's crazy. They're, they're still in school. And then like our captain um, works as a firefighter. So she was actually on call last night and then flew over with us today. Um, there's a few teachers, um, physios, occupational therapists, but maybe half our list um, is not like is either studying or just finished school. So it gives us that luxury of being able to be a bit more full time. And then a lot of girls are kind of just working part time maybe as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the league is still in a place where girls, their number one might be their career outside of footy, um, but it's definitely going in the direction of transitioning into more full time but I think it will be another few years but it's it's going in a really good direction this year there was a new um CBA new pay and there's like a 94 percent pay increase which is huge and it will definitely help a lot of Irish players as well that came out um so yeah I think the league is going in, in the right direction and so for you then you don't work alongside you're okay to just go and, and play professionally full time um yeah so like at the start when I look back I don't actually know how I survived when I first got drafted in 2018 um but at the minute yeah I'm able to um just live off my football but I also just to have balance with life I um work in the community department for like a couple of days a week so go to schools do some clinics um might travel up to like different aboriginal communities and just help them out with footy and stuff like that so that's more so just to um obviously it's a financial help but it's more to get that balance and ensure that you're doing stuff outside of football and then I'm doing my own kind of study as well so I just did Pilates accreditation exams um during the week too so yeah just trying to make sure that you're not like fully um thinking about football all the time and that you have something else going on and I think that's something I've definitely learned over the last couple of seasons when I've got injured that football can get taken away from you so quick so it's really important that you have not all your eggs in that one basket, I guess. Oh, that's amazing. No, that's good. It's great. And you get to see a lot of Australia as well if you're traveling around. So that's brilliant. Um, I was watching the the Fearless, the inside story of the, the FLW on Disney Plus. Um, it's a brilliant watch. It's so well done. And I think what struck me about it was just like the pure passion, the drive, like the commitment from the players. Um, like this is everything to want to win this championship and I knew that of course I know with professional sport but when you watch it and you actually get to see it you're like you're taken back by it you're taken back by just as I said the the pure commitment of it all and the passion of it all so like just to explain to people I suppose here at home like what it means inside that dressing room what it's like like it's it's very lively it's quite different I would think to uh, a GA dressing room yeah, um, the vibes are very different. Um, I think if a J coach walked into our dressing room sometimes before the game and saw some of the girls dancing around, um, <laughs> yeah. they'd tell them to switch on and focus. But um, that's something I think um, with our psychologist we actually worked on. We had these little bo- um, whiteboards on our locker and we write like on it how we like to prepare. So like for me, I have kind of just like to do a bit of a kick. I'm kind of quiet. I just like get a bit nervous do my own thing and then other girls are like I like to have like a rave and turn up the speakers and do whatever so I think it's important that we all respect um each other's preparation but it is a very different vibe but um it is kind of the same passion obviously as winning all all Ireland but I think Gaelic has a different feel to it obviously because it's part of where you're from too so um it's hard to kind of I suppose compare the two they're quite different but at the end of the day um to win silverware is ultimate goal and um I think just how much people give up here as well to make their career in AFLW like obviously at the minute it's improving but like seven seasons ago um the amount of hours that girls would have had to put in and have full-time jobs on the side is you know it's inspiring and a lot of those girls are pioneers for where this competition is going and the pathway that they're actually allowing young girls to have. So I think some of those girls like Daisy Pierce, Alicia Eva, and those kind of names that you would have seen in um, Disney Plus, um, they're the people that are have made that pathway now for young girls because, and even Chelsea Randall speaks on that about how she was bullied when she was like 
eight or nine because she had to go play with the boys and they didn't want her to play. And now she's one of the greatest AFLW players and um, has three premierships to her name. So I think there's a lot of inspiring stories. And if anyone has Disney Plus, I definitely would recommend to watch and even get an insight to Sarah Rose, Life of Collingwood and um, Breed Stack as well. So um, it's nice to see the Irish girls get um, in it as well. Yeah, it's it's brilliant to see. And to, as you said, where it actually came from to the place it's in now. And it's probably similar to home in a way that we've seen so much growth in the LGFA and it's brilliant to see, but there is a way to go. And I think that is quite similar maybe as well with the AFLW. Like I was looking at a AFLPA reports. It was, it's only out. I don't know if you'd seen it, but it was just saying that like 42% of the players say that they're being required to undertake like unpaid sessions on a weekly set on a weekly basis and just the respect levels within the game and um, compared to men's things like that so is it right in saying that there is a way to go uh in the aflw that it's not fully there yet um yeah definitely yeah there there is a way to go and it's about bridging that gap but i think when you do look back at where it's come from it, it has come on leaps and bounds and um, but I do think, you know, like some of the comments on social media about the standard of the game and all that, like, I don't think those people that write those comments realize that some of those girls have come straight from like a 12 hour shift as a nurse. And then they have to try train and then perform to, to the levels that um, the men do when when they have all the time in the world to to train their bodies and recover. So it's a similar scenario, I suppose, to the to the game at home where the women's game is at that you know, people at home have to work and then go to county training and play games at the weekend. It's it's still similar to that, but I think the girls that are leaving school probably have the luxury of being able to be paid at a level where they can focus fully on um, football and maybe study and but football will probably be their number one for the for the next few years. So um I think it's definitely going in the right direction, but um there still is still is a long way to go. Yeah, it's great to see the strides that it is making at the moment. And there is about 22 players, 22 Irish players who are playing at the minute in the AFLW. It, it's it's great to see. It's a huge opportunity to play professional sport. And I know a lot of you would have liked to have played county football here at home as well. But just with the new schedule of, of the AFLW, it looks like that's not going to be possible going forward. So I suppose you can't help but wonder, you know, is this going to affect the LGFE? the LGFA season here at home and I suppose not having some of the best players playing in it do you feel that it could affect the game here um I think to be honest like I wouldn't be scared that there's going to be this mass exodus from um, ladies football at home like I think it's a very individual thing um to come out here and play and give that up um I guess it might become a 12-1 thing as well so there's that homesickness side of things that might come in that often the men and even Connor McKenna and stuff have spoken about previously as well. So that's something that didn't really factor because we'd be six months here and then six months at home. Um, but yeah, look, I think it is a great opportunity for girls at home. Um, obviously, what I've spoken about, how the game here is growing and obviously the financial situation is a lot better as well. Um but I think, you know, it'll be very individual and I don't think it'll be possible to play both at, anymore. Um, so a lot of girls might prefer to stay at home and play Gaelic. And it's also career based. You know, people could be making their career in Ireland and can't leave that too. So I think it will be very um, multifactorial. And, and I don't think that the LGFA should be worried about a mass exodus. But I do think that some of the best players will be poached and asked to come out. Um but again, it's up to themselves. But a lot of the young players coming up here in Australia now, like the 18 year olds have played since they're five or six and they're elite. Like Ella Roberts is one of our best players and she's 17 years old. So maybe that need for Irish players will diminish a little bit as well. But um, yeah, I think the same as the men's, there's always those very athletic and talented players that are going to be approached. And um, that's the same with all sports. It's the same with soccer and rugby as well. So um, yeah, I don't think we'd be too worried, but it, it is a good opportunity. And for you personally, if there was a case that you could do both, would you like to do both still? Or do you feel you need to immerse yourself in one? Um, in an ideal world, I'd love to do both. Um, getting to represent Tipperary, I've had my best football memories in a Tipperary jersey and play like they're my best friends as well. But um, unfortunately, at the minute, I just think the demand to 
play AFL at the, the highest level and I think where the CBA has gone to and um, the hours that you're contracted for, um, I don't think it's possible and I don't think it's fair. Um, it's my job now and it's my professional contract that I have to abide by. And um, I don't think it's really fair if I kind of ask to, to come home in the middle of that. So I'm signed again for next year for West Coast, but I think it's a decision then I'll have to make of where's my career going? Is it physio and Gaelic is what I want to do or is it AFLW for the next few years and try and make a career out of that. But again, sport is so transient, different things happen, injury um, and all that. So I won't kind of make my decision too quick, but um, I think at the minute I'm just going to focus on the next five rounds anyway, first with West Coast and then um, go from there. But um, yeah, I do misrepresent in Tipperary, but at the minute, I guess where AFL is, there's just too much demands um, to play both. Well, it's exciting times at the end of that, that's for sure. And fitness-wise, does playing county football compare at all? Is there much difference? Um, yeah, I think, to be honest, um, it's a different type of fitness. Um, so I think with Gaelic, it's a lot more like sprint, um, re- repeat efforts. The game flows a lot more. Um, and then with AFL, with my position anyway, like I've had to do a lot of gym work, so I probably put on a lot more muscle in the last few months. So... I'm a bit probably bigger than I would be if I was playing Gaelic. Um, but I need to be strong in those positions because I come up against girls that are stronger than me. Um, and then I think the running that we did in the preseason is a lot more long distance. Um, so I might do like 500 meter runs, 250 meter runs, which is kind of different to the training that we do um, at Gaelic. So it's kind of that kind of more longer, um, but it, running but like the oval here is huge so there's a lot of ground to cover and you kind of do it at a bit more of a slower pace I guess than quicker up and down the ground in Gaelic um so I'm not really sure actually my chat to my SNC about and see if there are any comparisons of like the demands I guess on the body but I do find that the training is is quite different and even I'm in the gym a lot more for AFL than it would be for Gaelic football yeah, just from watching it, it looks like the hits that you take, you need to have your body ready. Um, I know that GA can be physical, but I feel like the AFLW is, is on a complete different level. If you could transfer one rule from the AFLW into the LGFA, what would it be? Um, From AFL to LGFA? Yeah. Um, is there something you'd like to bring in to, to the LGFA? Even just a little bit of the physicality, I suppose, like even just a hip and shoulder bump. Um, Obviously, the physicality in AFLW is a lot more than that. You can wrap people up in tackles. But I think if you could just do like a side bump shoulder um, to kind of get the ball and just be able to use your strength. And I know um, that's something that's been brought up this year a lot. And um, I think Vicky Wall has spoken out about it too. But um, I think the amount of SNC that you do these days, um, you're not really allowed to utilize that. Um, when it comes to game day um, so I think you know if, if someone's in the gym um, they should be able to show the rewards I guess on the field and um, the camogie have brought in a bit more physicality too so I think um, the LGFA probably should look at that um, especially because SNC and that is going to just continue to grow and um, I think girls need to just be able to use their strengths. Yeah that's it I think like that players are constantly in the gym now you know you do a complete different type of fitness a lot of s and c so you, you want to go out on the pitch and be able to put that into action so hopefully we do see changes in that aspect and if i had to ask you i suppose what do you miss most about home i know of course friends and family but other than that what what are you missing um i suppose i do miss gaelic um and then just like even over the summer, I saw like pictures of Ireland when it's sunny and I don't think there's any better place in the world. So, um, yeah, just like hanging around with friends uh, and stuff like that. But um, I'm really enjoying life here. I have a good Irish community that I've met. So I have a lot of really good friends as well. And it's nice that we're all in a similar situation away from home, too. So um, that's been really good and refreshing. But yeah, just miss the Irish people and yeah, nowhere feels really like home, but I am enjoying Perth um, so far. Oh, brilliant. And you, you have became an Australian citizen. That's that's amazing because that's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, so I'm actually very lucky. My mum was born in Melbourne. Um, so she lived here for like three years and then my grandparents moved back to Ireland. So 
Um, it was just a matter of digging up her birth cert and putting a lot of um, different documents together. And yeah, I was lucky I got my Australian passport. So it just makes life a little bit easier to come in and out of the country and just opens up more opportunities for work. Um, if my AFL career ever did fall through, I'd have the, op- the option to stay here and work as a physio and things like that. So it just takes a little bit of stress um, off the kind of visa side of things. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, no. it was great to hear. And do you and the other Irish girls, do you be in contact at all? Or I suppose with some of the girls that, that came out just recently, the likes of the Vicky Wall or Lalali, Eric O'Shea, um, did any of them reach out, I suppose, to to see what it's like over there or what to expect? Um, yeah, I just gave them a quick message when they um signed, just say best of luck. And Orla Lally obviously arrived out to Perth to play with Fremantle. So we've met up a couple of times and Oni Tigs there as well and Amy Mulholland. So there's four of us um in Perth, which is nice. And then um tomorrow morning I'm actually meeting up. There's a gang of us that are obviously Melbourne based Irish girls are going to meet up for coffee and that. So um that'll be nice. Um I lived with Aileen Gilroy and Joanne Doonan a couple of years ago in a house here in Melbourne. So it'll be great to catch up with them. And then I think it's whoever else is around. So Grace Kelly, obviously, who used to be at Eagles is going to be there and I think whoever else is free so it'd be nice to catch up with that gang but I think it's it's everyone's really supportive of each other and um, I don't think anyone's kind of left out here by themselves they all feel the support from you know another Irish girl so that's really nice and um, it's really great to see everyone flourish for their teams and um, yeah it's just nice to see amazing brilliant well enjoy that and thanks so much for your time i'm gonna let you go and get some rest now ahead of the game tomorrow the best of luck we'll be watching out for it here at home and yeah we'll catch up with you soon ash thanks ashley